Hello and welcome to the first video of what should be multiple videos in a step-by-step -step tutorial on the setup and configuration of Atomic FE's front end. I will also be doing videos later on uh, on the setup of Hyperspin, but I'm going to start with Atomic FE. Some things I'd like to get done in this first video is the creating of a project, the creating of a system select screen, then creating some of the emulation screens. Uh, the ones I'm going to be focusing on uh, primarily are the MAME and um, I will talk about some other emulators and other uh, things such as adding Diablo and your other executables uh, for games that are not under emulations but you actually have the executables, the EXE files and how you can incorporate those into your front end. So uh, let's get started. I'm going to open up the Atomic Studios by clicking this little blue wrench here. There is a video. Click close. So the first thing you want to do is click new project. So I'm going to click new project and then I'm going to call this, um, oh, let's just keep it as atomic project, just like that. Uh, yes, I wish to create it. All right, now we have our project open. The first thing I want to do is look at some of the project properties. Get that back there. All right, here we go. Um, click on the project properties. The, basically the only two tabs I ever use are these two right here. Um, first off for the, this is going to set the resolution for the, emu, uh, not the emulator, for the front end as it run as it's running. I like to keep this at 800 by 600. And then uh, the global option here, which we won't enable right now because this is a sort of uh, icing on the cake, final steps that you do after you've uh, created all the emulation screens and everything you're done um, here's where you can come in and, and say uh, that it asks for a password uh, this is helpful because if you um, if you're exiting out of an emulator or exiting out of a game and you push escape too many times uh, you will exit right out of the uh, emu or the front end right out to the desktop so by enabling this and then defining a password uh, by using you know numbers or or the push buttons and their associated numbers it'll allow you to uh, prevent yourself from accidentally exiting out of the front end and that's especially helpful if you have this feature enabled which will shut down your PC on exit of Atomic FE so um, you definitely want to have this with this because to, uh, to have to wait for the computer to reboot back up again uh, because you accidentally hit escape too many times uh, is it's it's just <laughs> it's a complete waste of time. So uh, you'll always, if you do enable either one of these, you want to make sure that uh, you, you you do them both. And um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, here you can set screensaver options, and I never really mess around with the uh, input options. Um, so we'll just uh, we'll just take this for now. <clears throat> Under tools here is where if you click this, um, once the computer starts up, it will automatically launch the uh, compiled uh, Atomic FE executable and your front end will start. So this is also another good uh, feature so that if you just power up your computer your front end will start up and you'll be ready to start gaming uh, without having to break out your keyboard or do any, doing anything else. Now of course obviously if you do this you want to make sure your computer is set to not have to log in with a password and that it'll automatically log in uh, to a user. Uh, again, and if you do have any of this enabled, you can always hit Control Alternate Delete on your keyboard uh, to break out of the cycle. Because uh, if you do need to edit something, it's hard to exit out of the emulation, be and you can't. If you exit out of the uh, front end the, and you have the shut computer down on exit, it will. There's no way to stop it. It's going to happen. So you actually kind of have to hit Control Alternate Delete kill the uh, front end application uh, so that you can get into the studio here and make your modifications. So uh, the, as I said, uh, the first thing we got to do is create a system select screen. So here we're going to click the new screen and there's some options here and basically the only two we're going to be working with are these two. Um, this one is a list of games to launch. That's basically say, saying an emulator, uh, MAME, uh, FreeDO for the 3DO system, um, this is where these are the type of windows that launch applications. Now this is a menu select. This will this will give you the option to select other uh, other screens. So 
you actually make these first and then you make your emulation screens uh, second. So we're going to create a menu first and we'll just call this select system like that. You click OK and then this screen will ask you what kind of uh, layout do you want to use and uh, here are some of the default ones that come with it. I'm going to choose this one right here because as my system selects I like it on a on a one picture at a time uh, if you're using this one, I know you can't really see it. Um, well, let's just say uh, this one here. You don't want your systems in, in, a, in a, or at least I prefer not to add the systems in a list here. I want to have a nice little picture and, and kind of scroll left and right through them, which you'll see whenever we get into the demonstration. Um, so this is the uh, layout I'll use. If, if you go download other layouts from Atomics FE's website, you can import them using this uh, import layout here and there's a bunch of them out there to download. So select this one, select OK. <clears throat> now we have the screen here. Uh, on this side of the Atomic Studio is, this will be where all of your screens that you create are located. Over here is where your actual project is. So just because I have this screen created over here, it's not in the project. You have to click it and drag it on over. And now we're going to start our hierarchy of windows. So the first one is never really seen. So you always kind of want, especially if you're doing multiple uh, emulations, if you were just going to do MAME, you could just create a MAME emulation screen and drop it in here and that's it. That wouldn't, that wouldn't give you any option to select any other emulators. You must have one of these. As you can see in the icon, it's a, a screen that goes to another screen or a window that allows you to select other windows. So, And that's why we named this one Select System because you won't ever see this text at all. Uh, the first window is never seen. So now the next thing, <clears throat> and um, I have to stop here and say, uh, there are many ways to skin a cat, as they say, and this uh, demonstration and the tutorial I'm going to be giving is how I like to do it. Um, so some people out there might say, hey, there's better ways to do this, or this is not how you're supposed to do it. This is the way I like to do it. Um, so if you like it, by all means, I, uh, I, I give it to you to, to do for yourself. But um, there are other ways to do what I'm going to demonstrate here. Um, I've just found out with experimenting with Atomic FE, this is the way I like to do it. Um, so now I'm going to actually start getting into putting down some of the systems. And the first system I want to do is MAME. Obviously, that's the most uh, important one. So I don't like to use the word MAME because uh, when my friends come over, they don't know what MAME is. Uh, they like arcades. That they can understand. So instead of making this a, you know, a emulation launching window, I'm still going to keep this as a, as a selector screen. And I'll get into more of that as we go on. So just bear with me here. And again, for my selecting screens, I like to use this style of uh, layout. But you can use whatever you'd like. All right, so now I'm going to click this and drag this and bring this over into our hierarchy window. Um, and you do have to highlight the, um, the window you wish it to go under. If you just drag it over here and drop it, I think it gives you some kind of error. So as you'll see here, now it's starting to uh, uh, build out here. So we have one main window, and then this window uh, will be selected from this screen. So... Um, I'm going to create another one, another sort of system like this, um, and I'm just going to call it PC Games. Now this would be, as I said, uh, any of the executables from like Steam or any other games that you have where you have an executable and you're not using like an emulator that has ROMs associated or, or things like that to it. So um, I'll click OK here. <clears throat> Again with the selection screens, I like to use this style. And instead of dragging this under here, because I don't want it at this level, I want it up at the system select level, I'll put it there. So see how we're starting to create a line here. <clears throat> All right, and um, I'm just going to leave that for now. And I'm going to come over to uh, the new screen, and we're actually going to create an emulation screen. So this one, uh, for my emulation screens, specifically when I'm building MAME, I like to name them in the genre in which I'm going to be applying games to the screen. So um, as an example, I'm going to call this one All Games. So this will be a screen that lists every game. 
Um, now, it might not be all the ROMs that I have, but it's going to be all the ROMs that I like to play. Uh, and from there, I will break them out even further into whether or not the, the ROM is a uh, shooter, <clears throat> first-person shooter, fighter, action game, hack and slash, driving, sports, whatever you want to call them. <clears throat> and we'll get into that, um, how you break that down. But it's always good to start with all of the games you want to play with first, and then it's easy to parse them out and uh, build your, uh, your other screens. So we'll click OK here. <clears throat> now we're at the screen properties for an emulation. Um, the first field here is the type of emulation we're going to use. We're going to do MAME. <clears throat> now here when you click your, click your EXE, it's helpful to know where your files are located. So I'm going to click here, and uh, I'm in Left 4 Dead for some reason, but I'm going to come down to where all of my <clears throat> emulators are. Emulators, MAME current version, emulators, how you guys organize this is completely up to you. The reason why I like to use the current version is because that allows me to just cut this out. I'm on version 141 of MAME right now. <clears throat> it allows me to cut it out and then I can download in a couple years a new version of MAME, pop it into this same current version and um, it will allow me to not have to come back into here and mess with any of my settings. Um, so if you take some thought into your folder structure and naming, um, it'll save you a little work if you ever go back and change or add things. <clears throat> so the command parameters you don't need to mess with. Uh, the ROM folders is next and you just again navigate down to where that emulator's ROMs are located. Here we go, ROMs. Uh, the extension is zip files for me. That's usually always um, some of this information is already pulled from the templates that uh, Atomic FE has set up for the emulation. Um, now we'll do our snaps, and snaps are screenshots of the game. So as you're selecting your games, you can see a, a little image of um, what the game is. Um, you're also going to see that I have video snapshots, so it'll actually play a video as you're... Um, selecting but I'll get into that a little later because as you'll see here there is no selection for video snaps so I'll have to show you how to do that a little later on and then obviously for here we're gonna want a list style because to use this style and and scroll left and right through every game and wait for it to slide back and forth it's it's it'll take forever uh, so here we're gonna want to see it kind of as a list of games so I'll choose this type of layout <clears throat> keep the screen orientation and there we go. So now we have an emulation screen. So this is the difference between like a system select screen or, or menu screen and an actual emulation screen. So I'll take this and drag this over into the arcade section. And you can see there. So we, if we launched this right now, we'd have this as our first screen. And we'd have two options. We'd have arcade and uh, PC games. And PC games, if we clicked on it, would do nothing because there's no other... Um, you remember these are just selection uh, screens. There are no other screens to drill down into. However, with the arcades, uh, we would see all games. But I do want to go into adding the executables. I'll break away from the main uh, for a second, and um, we'll come back to this on the next video. Um, actually, you know, let me uh, let me go ahead and create another main screen real fast, and we'll give it another genre name like uh, like shooter. S H O. There we go. Um, <clears throat> these are the games that are like 1942 or any vertical scrolling shooter uh, is another genre name they have for them. So I'll quickly uh, do this real fast. Select my executables, select my ROMs, emulators, name, current version, ROMs, and my snaps. And yes, you have to. I have to do this for every one of these genre screens that I want to make. It's a little bit of work up front, which is why I said there's many ways to do this, but this is just how I like to do it. Alrighty. So then, here we go. We have shooters, and I drag this like that. And the reason why I put this dot, if I didn't say before, is, is that um, without the dot, this appears. Um, within the compiled app 
uh, in alphabetical order. So if you had action or adult games, or um, it would go in alphabetical order. And I like to have this at the top. So making it period all games ensures that uh, from within the application, this screen will be the very first screen that comes up. And then it just, no matter how you organize it here, it doesn't matter. It's going to go in alphabetical order uh, when it, within the application. So um, that's it for this video. On the next video, I, I hope to demonstrate how to go into uh, these screens and select all the shooter games and associate specific ROMs to each one of these screens. Plus, we will, I'll go into it right now. Um, I'll show you how to add. Um, the executables for the games. I did say I was going to do that. So um, that is done by clicking this new uh, external program. You can click that and let's do Left 4 Dead. Left 4 Dead. And then you're just going to select the command line and anybody who has Steam knows that uh, they bury their executables deep. So let me see Steam, Steam Apps, Common, All right, here we go. So left for dead, and then there's the executable, and there it is. And now you can take this and drag this over to there. And uh, let's do just one more. Let's do uh, Raymond Origins. Let's back out since I'm right here, and this is Raymond here. And you can click that over there. So basically, you can build all of these for all of your um, um, all your external games, and um, it'll be, we'll demonstrate all of this in the next video. So uh, thanks for watching, and check out the other videos.